You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 14th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where local TV weathermen sometimes make the national news, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. That's right. And we are Team Joe Crane, we like are. the rest of our community. Pretty much everybody uh, is Team Joe Crane. Um, Joe Crane is local TV weatherman. Or was. Or was. was. <laughs> he was. There's a story there, Blue Gal. Why don't you tell me the story, Drift Glass? It has to do with a, a local weatherman named Joe Crane, who was an institution and has been doing the weather here since I don't know when, a long, long time. And you run into him everywhere. He jogs in the neighborhood. You run into him at the store. Nice guy, affable guy, typical, jovial, local weatherman. Everybody loves Joe Crane. He's also a meteorologist, so he takes his job pretty seriously. And as some of you might know, uh, Sinclair Broadcasting has been gobbling up local television stations for years. And Sinclair Broadcasting is a far right-wing propaganda tool that uses your local news to filter crackpot right-wing messages into your local TV news. And uh, they're also like hard asses on when it comes to corporate policy. Every policy is now set outside and they're just, they have to be. They're just dicks about every little thing they do, no matter how horrible it is, you got to toe the line. You can't speak against them. You can't say a word. It's all very, very corporate. So they have a policy that every time there's a breeze that ruffles the hair of any citizen in Springfield. That is a red alert. It's a code red, Blue Gal. It's a code red. Code red is their trademarked yeah. thing for the weather, right? And it was, code and red. It's, it's not just stupid. It's also dangerous because it at some dangerous. point, it's like, yeah. is that a tornado? Or is, there a, or is there just, you know, a light spring sprinkle outside? And you don't know by watching the weather because this is a branded Sinclair Broadcasting local channel um, piece of terror to keep you glued to the set for the commercials. Right, right. And Joe Crane finally said, this is silly on the air. There's no, this is this is reckless and irresponsible. This is just silly. We shouldn't do this anymore. And well, and that. he also pointed out that it was in contradiction to what the National Weather Service said. Right. Mm -hmm. You have... National Weather Service issuing alerts when there is a real yes. need, real tornado. And we do have those. And we do have tornadoes in South Central Illinois. And so, flooding. Real, a lot of yeah, flooding. And flooding, yeah. yes. So, it's, so flash floods happen. Our, our street, mm -hmm. has, you have lost a car to a I flood. Have, I have. I lost in, a car to a flood. Since you moved here. So uh, this, this is serious. And he pointed out that, you know, the National Weather Service, the, the National guidelines for weather are not being followed in order to keep viewers and it's mm -hmm. it's wrong and uh womp womp uh joe crane was uh not on the air anymore after that right. he was and, not on the air for uh, a few days and it was like well we're not sure what's happening with him no one's talking no one's saying a word we found out today or yesterday he was quote unquote let go yeah he was let go and what that means is in some form he was fired now whether he was fired fired or they reached an arrangement to pay him out to buy out his contract because media people have to sign. Most people, people in the media have to sign a non-compete somewhere. So I think there's, you know, there was always a fear that he would just walk across the street or go to another station and take his viewers with him. But the reason that this made national news and it did make national news <laughs> is because of Sinclair. Is yeah, Sinclair. This, and because not only did local people and, and, you know, little old lady viewers who like watching Joe Crane and the weather. Right. Uh, get upset about it, but advertisers, start, local advertisers, started yes. pulling their ads yes. from Channel Twenty News. And there's a there's a wonderful local coffee joint uh, which you can go to anytime you want called Graba Java. We we go there uh, frequently. They're locally owned. I, I the owner just sold. I know the previous owner. She's a very nice lady, and they have a, a big um, picture. They have an oil painting um, that they do redo every week or so hanging out in front of their shop. And it's usually something topical or funny or a little pun or something like that. And this week, it's a picture of Joe Crane holding a cup of coffee going, Code Red! And yeah, hashtag, Code Red. <laughs> hashtag Team Joe, hashtag Joe Crane, hashtag yeah. Save Joe, whatever it is. And yeah. 
the, I mean, we went to a, a little thing uh, down here called Bites on the Boulevard. It's, it's a little circle of food trucks. And there were a bunch of people out. It was a wonderful evening, cool and wonderful, and families were out. Just a wonderful neighborhood thing that I am also involved with in a very, very small way. And on the side of the food trucks, the hashtags were Fight Joe, Team Joe, Joe Crane, et cetera. Yeah. So it's down at the grassroots level. Like, you fucked with the wrong guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and he does to... a lot of charity work as a yes. lot of local news people sure do. Does. You know, he, he sure would does. go to hospitals. He would go mm-hmm. to do trivia night for fundraising for the animal shelter, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. He he and, was a local personality that a lot of people know. So and Sinclair's used to rolling into town, stripping the place down, putting a bunch of, you know, 14 year olds in charge and just telling them, here's the party line and you follow it and just shut up and follow. If you don't like it, you can take it down the road. Mm-hmm. And they bit into the wrong guy's leg, man. <laughs> and they, and he just, and all he said was the truth. Uh, he, he simply pointed out that this, as you said, is not the National Weather Service guideline. It conflicts with it, and it's just a bad idea. That was it. He didn't He didn't threaten to do anything. He didn't call for a strike. And that was enough to get him shit-canned from City so, Club Broadcasting. So we're going to switch gears and talk. We're, we're Team Joe Crane, let's just say we that. Are. And uh, we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit more about this uh, open-air market of food yes. trucks that yes. we go to. It's once a month in the summer. It raises money for local food trucks, raises money for local schools. Right. And we go and have a great time. They have tables out and food and sometimes music. And it's it's a great time. Mm-hmm. And uh, backing up just a little bit, earlier that day, we had had coffee with a listener, Steve, from Upstate. Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for buying us coffee and for your yeah. contribution and everything yeah. else. We're so grateful that you reached out, and we're always glad to meet someone for coffee in Springfield. I, I told uh, Steve I felt like an alderman because he slid an envelope across the table. <laughs> and, like, cool, and, and it was contribution to the podcast, and we deeply yeah, like, appreciate it. So sure, we sure did, and just had a great visit with him. We had a great visit with him. He's a baseball fan and a politics fan, and listens to other podcasts, and had a lot to say about uh, local politics where he lives upstate. And uh, he had some kind of insider information for us. He did. About uh, a university that that is north of us, where yeah. the uh, area official in charge of the voting, voting. the clerk, right? yeah, county the, that clerk, the voting uh-huh. guy, had uh, hidden <laughs> the voting place for a rather major university on mm-hmm. the fourth floor, back in the back of the building, mm-hmm. uh, and there was a ninety-minute wait to vote. Uh, mm-hmm. He didn't have enough voting booths. He didn't have, he wasn't prepared and uh, on purpose on purpose. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was a Republican and it was Rodney Davis's district. It's the same districts are gerrymandered here, but this one was, this one's really stretched out. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, this, and then he lied. He said, well, this is the only uh, room that the university gave us to hold a vote, hold the vote. Well, and, so, and the, the local activists who, mm-hmm. who figure this out and are, and are not going to make the mistake, same mistake next time, were running the students elsewhere. They were driving, driving people to the polling downtown places. Downtown just... to the county courthouse where anyone yeah. in the district can vote. You can always vote at the county courthouse. Yeah. Uh, and they were transporting students to, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't have to wait in line for over an hour. But, but the clerk, whose name we learned was Gordy, Gordy. Uh, yeah. said, I, I, got, I, I have no power. The university president made me do this. I have no choice. I have no power, et cetera, et cetera. We learned this from a second source, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it, it turns out that the president of the university mm-hmm. came down and said, no, you're lying. I gave you these rooms and these rooms and you had this space and you had this and you decided someone in your office decided to tuck it in the back. And so at the food truck thing later on that day, after we had talked to Steve about all of this, Mm -hmm. we bumped into Betsy Dirksen Londrigan, who is our democratic congressional candidate for 20. As happens, as happens at these Boulevard little matches, you run into senators and potential Congress people. Occasionally a governor will walk through. That's how sort of eye level. Right. Because it's the state capital and there's right. this event. So it's a public uh-huh. event. So uh, like a farmer's market only with food trucks. So we, uh, we got to talk to her about this and said, you know, we talked to Steve earlier today. 
Steve, we did how's mention he doing? The podcast listener, <laughs> Steve, you know, and he yeah. had all this information and about how, you know, the voting was being obstructed in at, right. at a On college treating. campus. They were cheating. On a college campus, yes. Right. And uh, she had a lot more information for us about that. About uh, other locations. The location the... was not only was it tucked in the back of the building and created lines and there was, weren't enough voting booths, but it yeah. was inaccessible to handicapped people. Are you right. kidding there me? A, there was another university where they pulled the same stunt. And yeah. I believe and, they did the same thing in Decatur. And... Ridiculous. And, and Gordy lost his job. Yeah. I mean, and in the end, that's what happened. Gordy lost his job. And, you know, we have a Republican clerk here in Sangamon County, too. Don. 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 But Don does Don. his job. Don plays by the rules. He, he plays really by does. the rules, and he does his mm-hmm. job. And uh, it's not that complicated. You make sure that there are ballots. You make sure that it the space is available, that it's handicapped accessible. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's not complicated, but you can complicate it. And I think it... Right. It... Uh, pointed out to me, as I said, after, after our food truck experience, I said, geez, you know, it's not just that Betsy Dirksen Londrigan has to travel around the district talking to people, have good, right. good policies, make sure her mm-hmm. policies are clear and understandable, uh, arrange the media, yeah. you know, arrange to have an advanced team when she goes there. She also has to factor in to her campaign Republicans cheating. She has to factor that right. in now. That's just a given now. And it's true right. all right. over the country. This is going on. And this is the reason we're bringing this up is, A, we got to talk to these people who yeah. knew stuff and it's kind of cool. But this is commonplace. This is what goes on in small towns, medium towns, Republican held At locations the all level. over the country. And Absolutely. so the outrage and shock that Donald Trump would say to George Stephanopoulos this week well, you know, I probably would commit treason. You know, I, yeah, I probably would know. talk to him and not call the FBI. Why wouldn't I? You know, this is this is his party. This has been his party right. all along. And they don't they care that he's cheating because right. everybody does it. And right, everyone does it. Everyone <laughs> not does. everybody does it. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Democrats don't try to stop college students from voting. This is a both sides don't moment. As everything really is. As everything right. really is. And that's our point yeah. is that and and the, the the flip side of that is if both sides do it is your right. go to argument, you are enabling Republican cheating. Yes, you are. And you can tell that by that excuse being all over Fox News the day after the interview yeah. was released. Well, and let's give people some good news. Mm-hmm. I mean, the good news that we heard from Betsy, who yeah. was clearly running again. She announced her campaign uh, last month. I went to her kickoff event. It was like old home week. Yep. It's really good. She's really gotten good as a uh, public person. Mm-hmm. She's always been a, a decent, kind person, but she's gotten good at being out in public and shaking people's hand and just working the crowd yeah. and being accessible to people. But she said, basically... They need to pick up three or four votes per precinct. Per precinct. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's, so when, when when you worry about how, whether your vote counts or not, it sure as hell does. Three to four votes per precinct would have we'll, changed we'll the change outcome of the election. the party affiliation of the congressman in Illinois 13 to yep. Democrat. Yep. Yep. So uh, we've, we've got our work cut out for us to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't pretend that it's going to be easy. No. Uh we, it was one seat that did not flip in 2018. So, and part of it was Republicans cheating. Yes. And they will fight like mad dogs to do it. Yeah. And you know that Gordy, whoever the hell he, he is, um, is not going to be unemployed for long. He's not going to go nope. uh, off he in the woods and, and think about. He absolutely you know, he's got he's, he's a committeeman somewhere. Yeah. He's got some job in some Republican organization because he did his job as a Republican soldier, which was make liberals cry. Yep. Make them and, lose and make Republicans win. And he right. did that. So at any cost. At any at cost. Any cost. And, yep. And so that's why we're calling this podcast our own working title is uh both siderism and state. The end yeah, the uh-huh. end it is the end at beginning and end of the cover that is given to the Republican Party. This is what happens when the disease of both siderism gets into the brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it becomes it becomes so automatic that I was uh, reading an article today about how 
um, scientists are finding microplastics in yep. the deep ocean, little fragments yep. of plastic way down deep. Plastic is everywhere mm -hmm. now, just like George Carlin predicted, frankly. Yeah. So go look yeah. that up. But um, both siderism is now everywhere. It's now everywhere. Every excuse of every person who doesn't, who either doesn't want to take a position on anything because it might be uh, cause them to to think something that they don't want to think or face something they don't want to fake face face or if they're a Republican, if they want to lie about their motives and their methods and their history, et cetera, the go-to lie of everybody who is out to fuck us over is always going to be both sides mm -hmm. do it. You can, you can tell them by the fruit they bear. And this week, it's clear that it was everywhere. There was a, everyone, literally this week, everyone from Donald Trump to David Brooks was making some variation of the both sides do it. Everybody does it. It's, it's, it's universally bad or corrupt or whatever to justify some horrible opinion they had. And they do it casually, they do it offhandedly. This is just automatic. When Donald Trump is confronted with absolute overwhelming uh, evidence that getting help, getting assistance, soliciting assistance from a foreign adversary, even a foreign ally to win an election is something nobody else does. And it's completely unacceptable, and it's treasonous, and it's illegal. His response was, nah, everybody does it. Everybody does it. The, re the reason I don't have to worry about being prosecuted is, A, I've, I've corrupted the courts, and, and I have a Republican Congress, Republican Senate, so I'm never going to get caught or, or I'm never going to get convicted of anything. But the real reason is everyone does it. Everyone does it. The whole system's corrupt. Everyone's bad. Everything's broken. Where the hell do you think he learned that? He learned that right. from the New York Times. Right. <laughs> he learned that from the Washington Post. Fox News. He learned that yeah. from the, the from Fox News, from the mainstream media and Fox News, letting every Republican atrocity off the hook by using that as an excuse. The reason Chuck Todd has a fucking job is because his job is to sit at a table and shrug his shoulders and say, "Well, you know how both sides are." Back when you probably remember this blue gal when the Southern Avenger yes. was was working on Trump's campaign, an out and out blatant, overt racist was was running Donald Trump's campaign or had a position of, of authority right. in his campaign. He should have been with a million miles of any presidential campaign, but he was out there as a member of the team. And so you have on the one side, someone employing an out and proud racist as, as a senior member of their team. On the other side, you have Hillary Clinton saying, hey, look, they're employing a racist on their team. And you have in the middle of Chuck Todd going, man, both sides race, race to the, to the bottom. bottom. Isn't it a shame? a shame? Isn't it a shame how both sides do this? Isn't and at that point, somebody should have really just punched him in the nuts hard enough to yeah. launch him into space. But they didn't because that's his job. His job is to enable these kind of monsters because Chuck Todd is in the comforting the, the viewer business. Mm -hmm. He's not in the news business. And viewers don't want to hear that one party is, is generating – monsters is creating beasts is, is just spewing them all over the landscape is, is wrecking everything they touch and the other one are the firemen who are putting it out viewers the people especially people who don't want to get involved in politics at all don't want to hear that so chuck todd's job is to sit in the middle of this squalor and blame both sides for the arsonist and the firemen for the fire and that's why they pay him that's why they paid david gregory before him whoever they replace him with will go on doing the same job and that's what i mean by it's everywhere it's everywhere. And the only people who, as far as I can tell, are pushing back against this monstrous lie yeah. are the liberals, yeah. are the, you know, your, your local cornfield resistance podcast. So I'm dying to hear Drift Glass because you, yes. you teased it before we started I recording. I did. What are the two words David Brooks should never say? The two words. Well, here's a joke for you, honey. Okay. How is George W. Bush's Iraqi clusterfuck like the institution of marriage? There are two subjects about which David Brooks should not say one more fucking word for the rest of his life. Uh, the Iraq, Iraq War. war. <laughs> David Brooks decided he'd write a column today about how uh, he wants to lecture Americans about how they're abdicating their foreign policy responsibilities in the country. Now, I suggested that the New York Times should have put a big, loud red alert siren in the middle of the building that went off anytime anyone saw David Brooks typing the word marriage <laughs> or Iraq yes. in his computer. Because there are two things that David Brooks should never, ever fucking talk about. The the, the hallowed institution of marriage and how important fidelity is uh, 
and which he still does after he dumped his first wife, cheated on her and took up with a much, much younger assistant. I don't care if you do that. I care deeply that you moralize about it. I care deeply that you turn your midlife crisis into some sort of spiritual journey that you're on. Fuck you. Secondly, it really bothers me when David Brooks starts talking about the Iraq war in some, in like a third person. <laughs> That he, that he never had anything um, to say about it at the time, right? No, never had anything to do with it. And, and I, I say in my little post here, and the second thing they should have done was I hire an intern or two or three to body yeah. tackle him. Yeah. Anytime he started, you know, move towards the typewriter. You know what I think I'll do? I think I need to write about Iraq today. Boom, down he goes. Um, but the way that David Brooks writes about foreign policy and Iraq, now that he's super humble, sort of Christian midlife mm -hmm. crisis guy, is he writes about it as, as one would... Uh, cyber stalk an ex-girlfriend, <laughs> you know, by pretending that he is completely some other person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's not the guy who wrote for the Weekly Standard. He's not the guy who built his career slandering liberals. He's not the guy who pimped the Iraq war relentlessly in the New York Times. He built his brand doing that. Now, he just wants to sit and rap with the kids about foreign policy because, man, he gets where you're coming from. He really does. He gets it. And here are three quotes from the, from the article. They're just sentence fragments. We need a leader who, leader who can grapple with failures like Iraq. America's leaders made some ter terrible mistakes, parentheses, Vietnam and Iraq. After Iraq and other debacles, writes David Brooks, as he opens up another paragraph. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the title of my post, Iraq and Other Debacles. And, and the reason he's doing this is he, he doesn't want you to remember that he was the, one of the chief cheerleaders for the catastrophe. That now he's looking at sort of like, where did this come from? Well, it, it certainly spoiled the whole generation on the idea of hopping on the gunboats and going up the Yangtze River to bring, you know, democracy to the heathens, right. which is what David Brooks really wants to do. So, but there's a second beautiful moment in this article because he uses his girlfriend's cyber stalking technology that I was never there. The Iraq war is just something that happened a long time ago. Who knows who started, who can blame us, but we're all kind of bitter about it. And we can understand that, right, kids, is that... You know who's responsible for the failure of American foreign policy? Who? Blue gal. Both sides. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it back in my head. I knew that. There are two tri types of low trust voters. One on the right. On the right, there are the Trumpian American firsters who want to cut immigration and break alliances. Mm -hmm. On the left, there are the new doves. And that's when I stopped reading. Because that's when I, I, I was like, I need the home phone number of right. the Schulzberger family, because I need to know right now how the fuck this asshole still has a job. How the hell does, it, does David Brooks, Iraq war pimp, get away with not just bringing the Iraq war out to talk about foreign policy as if he were never there, it had nothing to do with it, but use it as a lever to get into his favorite argument, which is, you know, both sides are equally wrong, blue gal. You know, that's the problem with our foreign policy. Both sides have a, a misunderstanding of America's role in the world. Who has a real good understanding? Well, David Brooks does. He makes middle, upper middle class white men yes. feel like intellectuals well, about politics. That's my problem. I'm not upper middle class enough. No, you're not. You're a dirty hippie, so it's too bad. Hey, did you hear? Did you hear what Kaylee McEnany said today? Uh, Donald Trump campaign spokes blonde. I, I did not. Kaylee McEnany. CBS News asked her about uh, receiving damaging information on political opponents provided by foreign governments. And, you know, would you turn it down or would you call the FBI or what would you do? And Kayleigh McEnany, spokesperson for the Trump campaign, mm -hmm. said that these uh, this damaging information and what to do about it would be vetted on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. If if it came with a case of vodka, because we'd do it. If it didn't, it, treason yeah. should be evaluated sure. on a case sure. by case basis. Is it worth to do the treason or not? What do you say, Don Jr.? You got to look in the envelope yeah. and see how much money's in it, Blue Gal. You, know, ah, you got to look because you don't know. It might be a lot of do money. They have, does the country have a Trump hotel that Donald wants to build there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we'll take mm -hmm. it. Does it? <laughs> If there's a if there's a hotel property that we're looking at, then sure we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh case by case basis. Thank you, Kaylee McEnany, and thank you. That was that came from uh Ten Grain at Mock Paper Scissors that came came to my attention. The question then arises yet again, why is she why is Rick Santorum? Why are any of these people? Why, why, why? And this is what this is where I fail our listeners, because I don't have Jeff Zucker's home phone. 
No, I know. I can't blow in a call to Jeffy and say, Jeff, come on for coffee. Come on to grab a java. I don't have a problem with elected officials or people that the campaigns have chosen to be spokespeople for the campaign Mm -hmm. being on television. Because it's important that I hear that Kaylee McEnany's campaign, the campaign that she works for, is going to do treason on a case-by-case basis. Yes. That's news. That's important. I need to know that. Mm-hmm. The, the public needs to know that. Uh, I have a problem when David Brooks is on my TV, Chuck Todd is on my TV, people who are clearly putting fingers on the scale of what I know, what I hear and what I don't hear mm-hmm. and are doing so in a biased way that uh, is has nothing to do. They, they've been given this power by a corporate entity that is my access to information. That's the information I'm, I need to go dig further than that. Mm -hmm. And most people don't, you know, if they, most people get their news when they get news at an airport and it's Fox news overhead on a TV screen. Right. Or CNN. You know, that really is, people are mad. We talked about this before when a tornado warning interrupts the bachelorette. That really is where a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they got upset about Joe Crane. Yeah. (laughs) Because you watch the local news for the weather. It's important to get good, accurate weather information for your life. And people tune in for that. Mm -hmm. Which is why Sinclair bought those stations and runs that half hour of TV. Because they have eyeballs for the weather and the local sports. That's what people want to know. So then you can then you get in between those two two minutes hate right uh, Boris yeah. Epstein going you know Donald Trump by the way by the way uh, completely aside I don't mean to jump tracks it's, uh, I was listening to local radio today mm-hmm. and because uh, I do that sometimes is and it Sinclair station no they were no. this is uh, WMAY this is the radio local radio okay and they were running ads they were running ads for Newsmax Television. Oh, my God. Newsmax television, where you can get all the updates on President Trump. That's what they're advertising. They're not advertising. It's it's, it's the tagline is real news for real people. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You can get. Uh, the, but the only thing they're selling is all the updates on President Trump. And they'll bring to you everyone from Bill O'Reilly to Mark Levin. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is this is this is where we live. Yeah, this is this is what it comes through on local television and local radio. And local radio is advertising. Here are all your cable options. If you just sort through into the, you know, into the fifty or sixtieth digit uh, above normal programming, you'll find Newsmax Television. Where, yeah, essentially, wow. if Fox News isn't fucking crazy enough for you. Right. If you want, if you need let need that needle directly into your carotid artery, we'll give it to you. And there's money to put that on the air. That's there the sure thing. is. There is really there's... money to put that on the air. Mm-hmm. Right. We are going to do a little bit of our news roundup now. Uh, because there's stuff there that I know you want to talk about. Oh, well, I do want to mention that I did a big, big post this week about Michael Gerson. So, yes, Michael Gerson is every bit as bad as David Brooks. You took about four days to write it, and I wasn't going to read it because I thought, why did I need to read about Michael Gerson? And then I read it, right. and uh, it's really good. And I Thank when Char- I only read it because Charlie Pierce recommended that I read it. Yeah, I know. So. I know. That's that's my <laughs> life now. My wife doesn't read anything right unless Charlie Pierce says, read it. Read it, asshole. Um, and I, I, I went back a long, long time, and I mentioned this last week. It's it clocks in at over sixteen thousand words. Yeah, well, uh, a lot a of long... it is quotes from Michael Gerson begging us to uh, practice civility. <laughs> right, right, and so, and you can really it, when you see these people operate over a long period of time, like like David Brooks, um, you can see how they never stop being themselves. Yeah. They, they have a certain they have three notes they play, and they play them no matter what rain or shine, hell or high water, whoever the, is in the White House, it's always, always, always. Um, Barack uh, the reason that Donald Trump was going to get elected was Obamacare. Yeah. <laughs> this time, the reason Donald Trump will be elected is abortion. Yeah. Goddamn liberals. It's always the liberals' fault. It's always their failure. It's always we drove them into the arms of, of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. It's always, or it's always both sides, or it's always a lecture on civility. And then we get back to abortion and contraception and the Pope and whatnot. But he really, he's a terrible, terrible writer, first of all. And his opinions are shit. Yeah. And he is, he, he would be as infamous as David Brooks if he weren't even more of a whiny little milk toast than David Brooks is. 
he really is sort of like, okay, David Brooks is on vacation. We can't get so and so. We can't get so and so. How about Gerson? Let's get Gerson. He's got little beady eyes and glasses. Oh, and, and Michael he can, Gerson is sort of, isn't he also syndicated in our local paper from time to oh, time? Oh, he is. Yeah. He's watching the yeah. Post. He's watching the Post guy, and he flies under the radar because he does that kind of. I'm a very Christian Christian person, and he notes evangelicals really need to stand up to this Trump fella. And uh, uh, if only the, and he he's another one who the day after the election. Um, was just stunned yeah. that the Republican Party he served. He has served. He's a, he was a Bush uh, Bush speechwriter. This is the guy who invented the mushroom cloud analogy for the WMD that wasn't there. This is a guy who's an analyst, a, a senior advisor of the Bush administration. This is a guy who has a long, really fucking infamous record of being wrong about everything. And there he sits. And he and there really is a club. This 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 club of mostly white men. Although there's, you know, there's your Peggy Noonan in there as well, who've been wrong about everything and, and who can never be fired. And, and it isn't just one guy. There is a cohort of these people. And the reason our politics is fucked is because these are the people that other people take seriously because they have the Washington Post banner or the New York Times banner over their heads. I wonder about that, though. I wonder if that's why our politics is fucked. Well, I, this is why the, the, the middle ground is uh, a mess. I'm pushing back on this because I really wonder what percentage of people who wind up dragging their asses to the polls. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to diminish. I'm, I'm, I believe in voting. I hope everyone sure. that listens to us votes. But there's, you know, what percentage of people didn't vote in 2016? It was mm-hmm. a lot. It was. It was huge. And uh so the people that drag their butts to the polls, how many of them are influenced by David, what David Brooks says oh, or what I, Michael Gerson says? I mean the opposite. I mean, the reason that people sit elections out, mm-hmm. the reason they stay away from the polls, the reason they shrug their shoulders and say, uh, Hillary, Donald Trump, it's the news, who cares? There's no difference between the two. The reason people have walked away from their civic responsibilities and sit elections out and go mm-hmm. and flip a fucking coin because it doesn't really matter is because these assholes have spent 20 years in positions of real actual authority telling very serious people college presidents and CEOs people who run you know people who run big enterprises people who who do TED talks people who you know the college lecture tour I've been repeating to them over and over again both sides do it both sides are equally bad there's no difference between the two sides it's the extremes on both sides that i think is what fucked up our politics Mm-hmm. Because it that's that that's a much bigger lie than any lie Donald Trump tells on any right. given day. Right. And it's much more pervasive it. lie. You're right. You're it's right. it's yeah. much more clear that it is a lie. And so the fact that the Schulzberg family and Fred Hyatt over at the Washington Post continue to put these liars on their op ed page and just shrug it off, like, well, you know, there's a lot of people out there who want to believe this shit. And they're wealthy and they have influence and this is what they want to believe, and this is the fantasy world they live in, and so do we. And besides, whoever the hell gets elected, no one's coming for me. You know, the the tr- the, the the truck is not going to come up to my door and mm-hmm. take my kids away. Yeah. So right, it doesn't really right, fucking matter. Right. There's a bunch of people out there who want to be reassured that everyone is equally corrupt and everything is equally bad and politics is awful and government sucks. And we're in the business of telling them that they're right. Yep. Just the same way that Fox News is in the, is in the business of telling bigots and imbeciles that brown people and liberals are the source of all their problems. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yep. Well, and this spoil this comes down as well to a Wall Street Journal article that I picked up at the coffee shop when we saw Steve. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and there was another example. I, headlines are a big problem. If there's a good yeah. article at Media Matters about how to fix headlines so that you're not just repeating Trump talking points in your headline and realizing uh-huh. that headlines are a lot of what the only thing people read when they're scrolling yep. through their phones and they get a good dose of Trumpism from headlines. I'm sorry to use the word Trumpism, but repeating Donald Trump's talking points to people who are scrolling in their phones, Uh it happens. And you may not intend it it to happen that way, but it happens all the time. Uh, There was a Wall Street Journal article uh, that caught my attention, which said AMA opposes Medicare for all. Yes, yes. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a big problem, because if doctors really object to Medicare for all and there's a there's a pushback from doctors, that could be a problem for passage. Mm -hmm. And so I read the article and the article was about how the 
board of the AMA oh. opposed Medicare oh. for All. Oh. And that at the AMA meeting, there were huge numbers of doctors and medical students and uh, attendees in general who were furious with the board of the AMA for opposing Medicare for All because – you get that you get patients who have not come to a doctor for three years because they can't afford their medication, mm -hmm. they can't afford a copay, and they doctors wind up with much sicker patients because of a lack of access to care. So the the article was really a should have been entitled uh, protesters at AMA yes. meetings stand up for a, yes. for Medicare for all, because <laughs> that's what the article was about. The other one that came out today was Kansas Supreme Court finds school funding unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> well, that got my attention. What golly, the hell? <laughs> golly. <laughs> and uh, it turns out that the Supreme Court of Kansas, which... Uh, you know, Kansas has been through a lot with Brown, Sam Brownback deciding to cut taxes massively for and millionaires. Destroy the and state. Corporation, yeah. And he destroyed his state and he destroyed public education in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, they now have a woman Democratic governor there to clean up what the Republican Party and Sam Brownback did to the yeah. state. Yep. And the Supreme Court found that all of the cuts to schools that were done were unconstitutional, that the state has an obligation, a constitutional obligation to provide school funding. Wait a minute. And Separate <laughs> but not equal is not the, is not the <laughs> law of the land in Kansas? Right, State? really? Right. No. And, and they have an obligation to keep up with inflation. That's the, uh, there's a lot of detail, little details about yeah. how are we going to do inflationary pay spending and what are As we going to do yeah. so forth and so on. But the point was, uh, the Supreme Court of Kansas said, okay, you've come up with this plan to fund schools. We are going to okay this plan. And we are going to stay in charge of the case. <laughs> in other <laughs> words, we don't trust Republicans right. in the state house no, you can't. You know, you can't. to continue to do the right thing when they have been told by us today that this budget that they just proposed is okay, that it is in keeping with the Constitution. We are going to still be in charge of mandating what school funding will be. That's not finding school funding unconstitutional. That is saying, right. no. we know that you will fuck it up if we aren't watching you. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to keep an aspect of accountability. The school funding, you will be accountable to the Supreme Court of the state to make sure that you right. do it right. Well, and, and you remember that the, one of the first thing John Roberts did when he got on the Supreme Court, they started nullifying the Voting Rights Act. Yeah, right. Because right. it's because there's no more racism right. and everything is fine now. Right. And we can get and immediately, immediately, all the Republican states had these plans sitting all these ready to go. Former Confederate states said, "Well, we can just uh, let you know start cutting people from the voting rolls." Right. Right. And but they were they were teed up and ready to go. Right. If you do, if you take your foot off their throat for a second, exactly. they will cheat and lie and cheat and lie because they know that that's the only way they hang on to power. So it is something that you just have to go into 2020 knowing knowing that they'll be cheating every inch of the way. And Chuck Todd will be sitting there going, why are both sides being so mean? Why are they being so bad? Why is there such a mess in Washington, Driftglass? It's Washington. <laughs> Washington politicians. You know, but you know who's going to fix that? The American people. The American people. Well, John Stewart learned about a little bit about that this week. Yeah, he did. Why don't you tell yes, us about John Stewart? Uh, John Stewart did uh, a good thing, a mighty good thing. He went to Congress and sat in front of a largely empty subcommittee and yelled at them for not taking the uh, funding of 9-11 uh, first responders seriously enough to make it a permanent fund, a permanent uh, rotating fund, I believe, a revolving fund, so that it never runs out of money. Uh, he used the, the staging of a nearly empty room to dress down the people and say, Congress has failed and you should be here and this is a shame. And it was great. Uh, it, was, it was the wrong room and the wrong crowd. I mean, literally, the, this was not the place to do this. Uh, and literally, it's not the Congress that's doing this. It is literally Republicans who are that's doing right. this. And John Stewart kept, he, he reverted for a time there back to his, remember that rally for sanity? Rally for sanity. Yes. When, when he, he was ha having, he was competing with Glenn Beck mm -hmm. for who can throw the biggest rally. And, and, but when he got 800 million people to, to the, uh, to Washington, it was a flop. 
because he kept saying, can't we get back to the time in traffic where you go and then you go and then you go and left and right. And he desperately, desperately wanted it to be both sides because as an, as a comedian yep. saying that it's all this, all these fuckers over on the right, these are the fucking people who were fucking up your country. That is that is not good for your audience. Mm-hmm. That makes sure that half the people in this country or more aren't going to watch your show. And so John Stewart held on to this ludicrous idea that it was both sides. And if we just all got reasonable until he was slapped in the face once too often yeah. by the Republican Party. And at some point he said, fuck it, it's Republicans. Let's quit pretending. Let's quit pretending otherwise. I'm, I'm not going to do this whole let's all take turns and get along like we used to, even though that never was the case. It really is the Republican Party. And he he reverted to his old self where he wants to blame a big faceless institution rather than Mitch McConnell. Right. Because the problem with this funding is Mitch McConnell. And so if you want to address people, the person who's standing in the way of this, go to Mitch McConnell's office. But Mitch McConnell's office isn't a big room that's empty. That's a good it is a good stage for this. So I really appreciate what he did. I agree with him one hundred percent. I Yeah, the cameras were running on him yeah. with 9-11 first responders behind him. That was Who, the place. There's there's no issue right. with 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 what he's trying to do. I agree with 100%. If I were king of the world, I'd wave a magic wand to make it happen. And I even agree with his sense of stagecraft. Yeah. That an empty room full of a few Congress people and a whole bunch of 9-11 first responders was a perfect venue to to have this very heartfelt and, and honest uh, and direct speech about their nobility versus the cravenness of Congress. Yep. I completely get that. He just was yelling at the wrong person. You know, it did remind me a little bit of that scene from, uh, what was it? The Grapes of Wrath. Mm-hmm. Yep. When they're coming to dispossess the guy off the farm. And the farmer comes out with a shotgun. And the sheriff's like, well, you can shoot me, but they're going to send somebody else. And well, what, what what about them? Well, that guy is beholden to a guy in Kansas City. What about him? Well, he's, a, he's beholden to a banker uh, in New York City. Well, then hell, who the hell do I shoot? And and the sheriff says to the farmer, he's kicking off his land. Brother, when you figure it out, you tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, there's there He wants it to be a big institutional failure, and it is. But the reason the institution is failing is because of one political party. And he does a disservice to the truth, which I know he honors, by pretending otherwise. And he was corrected rather publicly by a number of people. <laughs> yep. Uh, and it's pretty clear that the, that message was received. So, but that's what happened this week and, you know, more power to him. The more people like that who get into the headlines, get into the spotlight and really do bring attention to issues like this, the better. Yeah. It just bothers me. David, David Hogg this week, um, who, an anti-gun activist, mass shooting. A victim of a mass shooting in, of of the mass shooting in Florida. Yeah. Right. Uh, Was on Twitter saying both parties are to blame. And it just broke my heart because it's like. I know you're supposed to say that. I know saying that is what gets you. It's just, it just killed me because it isn't both parties. Farewell, Sarah Sanders. Yes. Yes. We hardly knew you. Oh, wait, we totally knew you. We totally knew you. And, yes, she and is. I'm really worried because Diamond and Silk are going to have to have a cage match to decide who replaces her. Yeah. Well, they'll, they'll just both do it. Because <laughs> well, Sarah Sanders quit to spend more time lying to her family. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, the, one of that duo will will lie. The other one will stand next to her and go, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm, that's what they do. That's, mm-hmm, that's the yep. whole act. Yep. That's their act. So... This week, Donald Trump also admitted he wanted to hear from foreign governments. With damaging information about his political opponents, he claimed there isn't anything wrong listening to a foreign government if they collect if they contacted him. And he and said, we have information on your opponent. So, you know. Case by case basis based on whether right. he has a hotel property he wants to promote in your country. Well, okay. well, then he turned right around after it turned out that a lot of people called him up and said, you just admitted to uh, a desire to solicit treason um, and espionage on national television. He said, no, no what, I, what I meant to say was. Of course, I should immediately call the FBI about these calls and meetings, question mark. How ridiculous. Then he argued that his comments were taken out of context, claiming that his, quote, full answer is rarely played by the fake news media and that, quote, they purposely leave out the part that matters. Well, the part that matters, Driftglass, is that his son, Don Jr., was testifying behind closed doors that day. 
yes. uh, to clear up some matters that the House Intelligence Committee had with his previous testimony. Yes, so, just a few hours. Yeah, you know, you know few and Don Jr. is the one who really broke the law blatantly mm-hmm. meeting with Russians to talk about dirt on Hillary. And there is a email trail pointing to him. Moving on. Republicans in the Senate blocked an effort to pass a bill that would require campaigns to tell the FBI about any offers of foreign assistance they receive. Mm-hmm. My One of my least favorite uh, members of Congress, Senator Marcia mm-hmm. Blackburn, Republican of Tennessee, baby parts Blackburn, yep. said the legislation's reporting requirements were overbroad and complained that it would require campaigns to worry about disclosures at so many different levels. Yeah. So she blocked it. Right. A Republican blocked an attempt to protect our elections from foreign interference because that's what they do. And they picked a senator who is not up for re-election until 2024 right. to mm-hmm. block that piece of legislation. And who is universally hated outside the Confederacy. Right. Um, right. Things have gotten so bad that the FEC chairwoman uh, Ellen Weintraub had to come out and say that, quote, I forgot armed robbery was illegal was a Steve Martin comedy bit and not a defense. (laughs) So she said, and I quote, let me make something 100% clear to the American public and anyone running for public office. It is illegal for any person to solicit, accept, or receive anything of value from a foreign national in connection with a U.S. election. This is not a novel concept. And I tweeted Mm -hmm. back to her, great, now do hush money to a porn star. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, that's in page two. Yeah. That's in the part no, two of the no. Mueller report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The owner of one of the Japanese oil tankers that was attacked in the Strait of Hormuz says the U.S. is wrong about the attack, contradicting claims made without evidence by Donald Trump and Mike Pompeo. Yeah, this is this is one of those things where you really need your government not to lie to you, and when the guy in charge of the government is a pathological liar, has employed has employed nothing but pathological liars to work for him. You have no reason to take him at his word. Code red. A federal watchdog agency recommended that Kellyanne Conway, you remember her, immediately be removed from service, citing repeated violations of the Hatch Act, which prohibits federal employees from engaging in political activity on their office roles. Trump said he won't fire her because, quote, it looks to me like they're trying to take away her right of free speech. And that's just not fair. You know what's not fair? Having taxpayers pay her salary. That's what's not fair. Yeah. There's a whole lot of, on my list that's not fair. That's near the top. Trump still owes hundreds of thousands of dollars in security fees to at least 10 U.S. cities. Mm-hmm. The Trump campaign has failed to reimburse the cities for public safety costs associated with his presidential and campaign rallies. Mm-hmm. The total bill currently sits at $841,219 and includes invoices that date back to before Trump was elected. I included this because local Republicans here uh-huh. used to just bitch that the Obama campaign still owed the police department some few thousand dollars for the extra protection they provided during his campaign. And even though I believe that money was eventually paid, they wouldn't fucking let it go. That was their mm-hmm. evidence that Barack Obama just was corrupt out of the box and he just did look down his nose at working people and – I heard it a thousand times at diners here and at meetings here. The, uh, the Obama campaign, yeah, you a bunch of criminals, they're ripping us off. Like, and you could put this, tie it to a brick, slam it on the table. Same people who said that would just roll their eyes and say, well, you know, both sides do it. Both sides, mm-hmm. yeah. Kamala Harris, if elected, said her Justice Department would have no choice but to prosecute Trump after his term of office. Donald Trump ordered his aides to lie about the results of his campaign's internal polling efforts in key battleground states. Then he turned around and personally lied about the polls again, claiming that he is, quote, winning in every single state we polled. Romney's going to win in a landslide, Driftglass. Going to crush. He's gonna be, it's going to be amazing. You're going to be stunned. Mitch McConnell, the carbuncle on the ass of democracy, laughed off reports that his wife, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, helped steer federal funding to his home state of Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, As of today, at least 22 foreign governments have spent money at Trump organization properties. This includes hosting events at a Trump property, renting or rented or purchased property in buildings or communities owned by the Trump businesses, staying at Trump properties and attending parties or gatherings at Trump properties. 
Each one of these is a separate impeachable offense of the emoluments clause of the U.S. Constitution. Speaker Nancy Pelosi said impeachment is not off the table, but that the Democratic caucus is not even close to moving forward with impeaching Trump. Again, I think she's just waiting until 2020. I I really do. I think she wants it on TV all summer next year. Let me put it this way. If that's the reason, fine. Uh, But that's the only reason that is acceptable. I agree. That's the only thing acceptable. Uh, Justin Amash, you might have heard, quit the House Freedom Caucus when he discovered it was full of Republicans. (laughs) And, and Shocked him. you know, again, this is this is David Brooks syndrome of don't yeah. treat him like a hero. No, he's he's just a real true believer in libertarianism and wants to cut funding for everything and is betrayed by Republicans who pass tax cuts for billionaires. And he doesn't agree with that. So. Right. Uh, and and he read the Mueller report and sees what is written there. So good for him for that. Three Republican former heads of the EPA accused the agency's current leadership of taking a catastrophic approach to climate change by undermining the science. Trump also blocked a State Department intelligence agency from submitting written testimony that human-caused climate change is possibly catastrophic to national security. And you know who else uh, gave a very good speech this week? Uh, Pete Buttigieg gave a very good speech this week on national security. And a big chunk of it was climate change. I did want to mention that. Um, it, it was a good speech. The Trump administration rejected requests from U.S. embassies to fly the rainbow pride flag on embassy flagpoles during Pride Month. Of course they did. And lastly, but not leastly, the symbolic oak tree that Emmanuel Macron gave to Trump last year has died. Died of shame, I would assume. Died, died of died. shame. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Princess. Princess is a lovely rescue kitty. She's a Siamese. She has beautiful blue eyes. She's very chatty. And uh, she does not care who is on any debate stage because all stages belong to her. (laughs) And, of course, Princess demands freshly poured cat food. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. The fake sponsor of this podcast. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Princess at our Facebook page and website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address information, GoFundMe, both sides don't bumper stickers and (laughs) t-shirts. Don't forget. All of them are there at proleftpod.com. And I I really think those both sides don't t-shirts are going to be a big thing this year. I do. They don't make them in my size. Ironically, the one, the bling we have, I have to wear a bunch of bumper stickers all pasted together <laughs> on my body because T-shirts just don't He's come in my size anymore. a very long trunk, Drift Glass does. I do. He needs a long T-shirt. Yeah. Yes, I do. But uh, anyway, I think those the both sides don't bumper stickers and the both sides don't uh, slogan and, and hashtag on tr- Twitter are going to be a big deal this year. I'm going to just be on Twitter 20 hours a day, <laughs> all day. Everything. Everything, Everything is going to be, be both, both sides, sides don't. don't. Everything's going to be done. I'm going to personally raise that thing up. Bring that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think Joe Crane was screwed. Let's think about living. living. Let's think about loving. loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018.